I want to welcome you to a segment of the Jermaine Brown Investing Show. Today is Thursday, August the 28th, 2014. I want to talk about a particular strategy that I like to use in the markets. Now, a true professional, professional traders, and they, you know, they don't like to dis divulge how they make money in the market. But true professionals, they can make money regardless of the stock or the market goes up, goes down, or stays sideways. This is actually a strategy. Now, the funny thing is this. Warren Buffett stated some, a couple of years ago that derivatives is a weapon, a financial weapon of mass destruction. And all an option really is, because that's what I do, I trade options. All um, an option really is, is a derivative. Okay, but it's funny because Warren Buffett says that is a financial weapon of mass destruction, yet this is what Warren Buffett uses to acquire stock. So it is funny that he says that. But nonetheless, this is a strategy that if implemented properly, and with every strategy, there are rules that have to be adhered to. And if you adhere to the rules, you should be successful utilizing this strategy. It is called writing put options. Okay? What is put options? All a put option is, is it gives the buyer the right, but not the obligation, to sell a stock at a specific price on or before a specific date. Okay? All a put option, folks, is it gives the buyer the right but not the obligation to sell a stock at a specific price on or before a specific date. Let's assume, for the sake of argument, you own shares of stock XYZ. Now, we're going to do this in lots of 100. The reason is because options trade in contracts, not shares. Stock trades in shares, options trade in contracts. And each contract equals, we're talking about standardized options here. We're not talking about minis or any other type of exotic options. We're talking about just standardized options. Each contract equals 100 shares of stock. Okay, so we're going to do this on a one contract basis, which or 100 share basis. So, let's assume you own shares of stock XYZ. And you bought it today at the market, it's trading for $20. You believe XYZ is going up. That's the reason why you bought the shares. But however, how many times have you bought shares in the past of a particular company only for the stock to not only not go up, but it would drop down in price and it would drop down huge in price. In other words, it would be a big fall in price. Well, did you know that in the stock market, on the options market, you could have actually bought insurance that would have protected you for that fall in price? As a matter of fact, you would have actually got paid for that fall in price. Isn't that beautiful? See, um, another instructor once said, all wealth is taught. And he is so correct on that, okay? Because these are not things that the financial media the media, particularly the financial media, if you go to CNBC, Bloomberg, Fox Business News, whatever, you're not going to get this type of information. They're not going to tell you how to protect the stock in the event that it drops. So you buy the shares 
okay? This is something that you will not get from a lot of your brokers, okay? You put money in these big brokerage houses, Charles Schwab, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, okay? Any one of these big brokerage houses. Most of them don't even utilize this type of strategy. So you buy shares or you buy your mutual funds. By the way, this does not work with mutual funds. This is one of the reasons why I don't like mutual funds. Mutual funds only make money if the stock or the mutual fund, if the fund goes up or the market goes up. If the market doesn't go up or the fund doesn't go up, the mutual fund does not make money. That's just the way it works, folks. And 401ks fall in the same class as mutual funds. That's why I don't like mutual funds. Because mutual funds, you have a, what is it, 33% chance? Because each direction is 33%. Okay, so 33% chance of going up, 33% chance of going sideways, 33% chance of going down. So really, when you buy mutual funds, you really, your, your probability is really at 33. Or really, or even if we want you to just keep it more simplistic, 50-50, because it can either go up or down. Okay, so then now, I like to increase my odds of success, regardless of whether it's 33% or 50%. It really doesn't matter. Okay, the reason I use 33% is because there is this, the market can go sideways. But if we're just talking up and down, we're talking 50-50. But again, I still want to increase my odds of success. The way I can increase, so, let's not worry about the seller part right now. So you're the buyer, you bought shares of stock XYZ at $20. Okay, if the stock goes up, that's great for you. You just made some money. But if the stock stays sideways, you're not making money. If the stock goes down, you're not making money. As a matter of fact, you're losing money. On top of that, you gotta pay the broker. You gotta pay the, the manager. Everybody's getting paid but you if the stock doesn't go up, okay? But what if there was a way to protect your stock? from losing so much money in the event that it does go down. You can, what is called, buy a put option, okay? If you buy a put option, it gives you the right to sell your stock at a certain price or before a certain date. Now, like a stock where you can hold theoretically forever, you cannot do that with options. Options have what is called expiration dates. So the stock has to do something within that period or you lose the premium that you paid for it. Now, let's look at the other side. Me, I'm the writer of that put option, which means I'm willing to insure your stock at 20, I mean at 19. So let's say you own shares of XYZ at 20. Now, I don't mind buying stock shares of XYZ at 20, I mean, not at 20. I'm sorry. I don't mind buying shares of stock XYZ, but I don't want to pay $20 for it when I can pay 19 Because I do believe that the stock may come down a little bit in price. But in the event that I'm wrong and it goes up, I want to still be able to make some money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the right to sell your shares to me at 19 Okay? So stock XYZ... It's trading at $20, okay? I'm gonna give you the right to sell your stock to me at 19. All right? So I'm giving you the right to sell your stock to me at 19. So you're only risking $1. So if the stock goes all the way down to take $10, instead of losing $10 per share, you only would be losing a dollar in this instant. Oh, you come out well, don't you? So who's really taking the risk here? Me. Well, if I'm taking the risk, you're going to pay for it. Because, hey, what if the stock does go down to 10 Now, I'm going to cover that trade at 19 I'm taking a $9 loss. So if I'm going to take that law, Ruby willing to take that loss, you're going to have to pay me up front for it. How much are you going to pay me? Let's say 50 cents.
okay? By the way, that $19 is called the strike price or the striking price, strike price, that's the price that we, are, that we agreed upon. Because for every buyer, there has to be a seller, and for every seller, there has to be a buyer, okay? So you agreed to pay me 50 cents up front for this right to sell your shares to me at 19. Now, that's not 50 cents for one share. That's 50 cents per contract per share. Let's assume one contract, so that's 50 cents per for each share, which is 100 shares, that's $50 that comes immediately into my brokerage account. And I can do whatever I want with that $50. You, don't get, you do not get that money back. That's my money to keep. I can do whatever I want. I can spend it. I can reinvest it. I can do whatever. It doesn't matter. It's my money. Now, like I said, there are three. Oh, let's not forget, these contracts don't last forever. This contract expires say the third Friday in September. Okay? Monthly options expire the third Friday of the month. All right? It really is the third Saturday, but since the market isn't open on Saturdays, for, for all intended purposes, it's really the Friday, the day before. So this contract expires the third Friday of the, in, in of September. Now, that means if stock XYZ does not go below $19 by the third Friday of September, this contract expires worthless and I get to do it all over again, write another contract and you would have to buy another contract. So now, <clears throat> when you enter this trade, you enter it at $20. Well, there's really only three directions the stock can go. It can either go up, it can go down, or it can stay sideways. If it goes up, let's say it goes up to $21 and $22, you come on well. Well, in actuality, yes, you came out well. Because, see, even though you paid $20 for the shares, don't forget the premium that you also paid. So your cost basis as the buyer is $20.50. That's how much you're paying for, to own 100 shares or to insure 100 shares of stock. You're paying 50 cents. So your real cost basis, because you bought, you bought the shares and you're buying the insurance, is $20.50. So for the buyer, remember that. You just paid $20.50. However, for the seller, okay? So now, let's assume the stock goes up to, say, $22. Well, guess what? You come out well as the buyer, because why? Your stock is increasing in value. So that's good. So on the third Friday in September, the stock is at 22. Congrat the the, the um, insurance expires worthless, but congratulations because you got what you wanted, which was the stock to move up in value. Okay? Now, it's still the third Friday in September, right? So this that was scenario one. Scenario two is the third Friday in September. The stock is still trading at $20. Okay? The, you're not going to sell your shares to me at 19 when you can sell it on the market for 20, especially when you paid 20. So you would be losing money there. So this contract would again expire worthless. So now you didn't make money, but you actually lost 50 cents because why? The 50 cents you paid for the premium. So you lose, I win as the seller. By the way, even if the stock went up, went up to say 22, which was in the first example, as the seller, I win. Because even though I don't get the upside movement of the stock, I still got the premium up front. So I made money that way. In scenario number two, I still keep all the premium. I don't have to worry about using it to buy the stock because the contract expired worthless. So that's the second scenario. Then there's the third scenario. Let's assume the stock went down and it went down, you feared it possibly going down. That's why you bought the insurance, and the stock actually did go down to 1850. So it's the third Friday in September, and the stock is now trading at 1850. Let's see what happens. Third 
third Friday in September. Stock XYZ is now at $18.50. Okay? Here's the trick now. Because you paid me 50 cents, and I have to buy the shares at 19 because that's the agreement. The share is now at 1850, which is below $19. So now I'm obligated to buy the shares at 19. But because you paid me 50 cents, guess what? I broke even. Because why? That 50 cents that you paid me is now going to be used to buy the stock. So my cost basis is now 1850. So as a seller, I still, even though I don't make any money, I still came out even because I still got the stock at the favorable price. Okay? So I still come out, I'm still okay if the stock goes to 1850. But now, what about you, the buyer? Well, because your cost basis is now $20.50, right? So we're gonna say buyer's cost basis Okay? So your cost basis is now $20.50. $20 for the shares of stock plus the 50 cents for the premium that you paid. Now the stock is at nine, I mean 1850, but you have the right to sell it at 19. So let me see. Buyer sells shares at $19. Okay? So, $20 minus $19, I mean $20.50 minus $19, that means you just lost $1.50. lost a dollar fifty a share now so as the buyer you lost a dollar fifty a share but don't cry too much because it could have been worse the stock could have fell even further that's why you paid for that protection now you would say well Jermaine why on earth as the seller would you take that risk that's what insurance companies do have you heard of Geico say 15 minutes by switching to Geico all state, you're in good hands with all state, state farm, okay? Progressive. You've heard of these companies, that's what they do. They, they calculate the, 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 um, their risks and they sell contracts based off of risks. So I'm, but I'm betting that the stock does not go below 1850. I've already done my research and, and I know this stock may come down a little bit in price, but it's not going to go below 1850. So I've already done my homework to see where this stock is. In other words, I really don't care where the stock is going, where the stock is going, but I do care where it's not going. That's what I'm looking at. Where is this stock not going? That's where I write my contracts at. So therefore, my probabilities of success is actually much higher. Because why? Now, remember what I said. For the stock buyer, your probability of success is really 30, 33%. Okay? If you go to three directions, it's 33%. 33 up, 33 side, 33 down, right? Okay. Oh. Okay. So... Now, what about from this, me as the seller of the put option using all three scenarios, up, down, and sideways? 